It's our last day in Dvorak, Croatia, and we decided to take advantage of how close we are to Bosnia and Herzegovina. On our way to Mostar, we stopped at Buna River. We are already two hours into our drive, so it was nice to stop and start exploring the area. Lining the riverside are many restaurants, and a few of them offer a romantic setting tucked away under trees inches from the riverbank. After peeking in on some of the restaurants, we start to head over to Blagaj Tet. The Sophie House, also known as the Dervish Monastery, was built in the early 15th century by dervishes and is snuggled tightly at the base of a 200 meter long cliff. Although we didn't make it inside the house to tour the chambers and the hammam, we did, however, walk the grounds outside, admiring the gardens and the view of the river. The Buna Cave has an underground karst river flowing out of it, creating 43,000 gallons of water per second. The water has this beautiful blue-green hue and is so pure that you can order a glass from the spring at any of these restaurants. Speaking of restaurants, we decided to grab a Turkish coffee and sit right next to this beautiful river. Tranquil waters and a peaceful energy. What a treat to have had the chance to visit. We entered Mostar on the west side, which I'll explain later regarding the two sides of Mostar. Known for its unique shape, this bridge was built in the 16th century by the Ottoman ruler. Originally an old wooden bridge that took a decade to build. It was functional, yet scary to cross for locals and traders. Later in the 1500s, a new stone bridge was constructed, replacing the old rickety one. After its inauguration, the bridge became a popular place to dive from. After collecting money from tourists, divers will jump from the highest point on the bridge. We have now entered into the eastern side of Mostar. The old bazaar is lined with local craft stores and restaurants. I paid to climb the very claustrophobic spiral staircase up the minaret. Although the climb up and down was sketchy, it was well worth getting in the view. As I mentioned earlier, there are two sides to Mostar. The bridge is a powerful representation for Mostar. West meets East in the center. It symbolizes that different cultures and religions can live in peace together. After passing many cafes and smelling the food pouring out of these restaurants, it was time to eat. Our tour guide took us to restaurant Shadravan. He took the initiative and ordered for all of us. To our surprise, a huge mixed meat platter with french fries, bread, and all of the side fixings were delivered. Try it. Try it. Try it all. Try it all. French fries. Everything. Always. Good, that's really delicious. Yummy. And to finish our delicious meal, domestic cake, baklava, fruit, and Turkish delight.
Originally during the croat bosniak War from 1992 through 1995, the bridge was destroyed by the Croats on November 9, 1993. In 1995, the reconstruction of the new bridge started. Some of the original stone blocks were used after recovering them from the river. The bridge is now included as one of the UNESCO's World Heritage List. We say goodbye to Mostar and head back towards Croatia. Boy, those strawberries look good. Tony also knew a nice spot to break up our long car ride to use the WC and grab a coffee. Little did we know, this stop was going to turn into a miniature tour. We stopped at the Sanika Ravno Hotel, a former train station that welcomed passengers from Dvorak, Vienna Railway. Now, it's turned into a beautiful hotel, restaurant, and wine bar. While I freshened up and relaxed with my coffee, the owner was kind enough to give Alfredo a private tour of the property. Oh, what a treat! Alfredo got to try aged prosciutto. Just a few steps up and Alfredo also got to visit one of their beautifully decorated suites. Stay here, but there's no doubt we would if we were ever to return. We had a great day trip and very lucky to have been able to visit Bosnia and Herzegovina.